Amen. I think so. Absolutely. He's laying it all out there, isn't he? Praise the Lord. What does it mean when a pastor looks at the clock? Nothing. That's what I thought. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's like it's like my we're not started yet, are we? Uh, no, it needs to start recording when I start with the message. Hallelujah. Now I lost my train of thought. I was really going somewhere. Oh, I'm supposed to preach. Oh, yes, I do. Did you not? Do you not have one? Nope. Unless you're the computer. In my first life, I was a base baseball player. No, I don't believe in recreation. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, it's amazing. We're, we're uh, just about to get into the month of Adar already. And what's the month that comes after Adar? Nisan. Nisan, which is the month of what? Passover. 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 Beginnings. We basically believe that, that, uh, that uh, the first of Nisan was when the world was basically started, when it was created. Everything starts from that point out. So it's amazing that we're about Nisan. It's also, I was looking at the calendar and, and Eshtar, I mean, Easter, I'm sorry. <laughs> and Easter when, uh, is actually the end of this month. It's the last Sunday of this month, and, and our Passover Seder will be the end of the next month. And a lot of times we've had, when we've had Seders, people haven't come to the Seder because they were good. It was, we used to have them on Fridays, and, and uh, so they were celebrating Good Friday at their church, so they wouldn't come to the Seder. But he, this is about three weeks separate from, uh, from that, so I don't know how that'll happen, but it did. I had a little interesting thing that I heard. You know, these little pockets that are in your trousers, the little pocket up here, what are, what are those for? No, no, what it is is the big pocket is when you get your check, then after the government takes your money, you put it in the little pocket. <laughs> now are you all relaxed, ready to hear? The word of God already went out today in song. The songs were, were powerful that was sung today. And, uh, I'm going to make sure I got this thing turned in. Okay, we're ready. So I'm teaching on Yeshua. Isn't that a novel concept to preach on Jesus in the church? Yeah. Uh, so where's Jesus been so far? We started out with him being at where? No. It, it was with who? With John the Baptist when he came to him. As I started there, I didn't go back to when he was when he was born and all that. But uh, I started there with John the Baptist. From John the Baptist, he went where? Man, I got to go back and preach this whole thing all over. Start all over again. What Jesus first time he came to John? Where did he go to after he got out of the was baptized? Wilderness. Thank you. He went out in the wilderness to be uh, give her a star. Went out into the wilderness and was tempted for 40 days. Came back to John. Where did he go after that? I heard it before. Cana. That's, that's where he turned the water into wine. Uh, that's that a lot of the church people can't believe that he actually did that. And then from there he went to Walmart <laughs> didn't need to go there, and then he went to back to Capernaum and and back to the to Jerusalem. And last week he, we talked about the lady at the well. What was her name? Fatina. Fatina. 
which Wikipedia says that, and they build a church over top of, of Jacob's well there where Jesus was with the lady. And he said uh, uh, they have a church built on top of that well, which every time there's something that Jesus did special, why even on uh, the Mount of Transfiguration, when we were up there, there's a big church built up there because it's they've got to celebrate everything. And so that church is called the Lady uh, Saint Fatima. Supposedly she was murdered or martyred. Anyway, so today uh, we're going to John five, and and basically I'm taking, like I said earlier, Michael Rood's got got a chronological gospel, and so far we've been in John, and I think after we get done with this chapter, then he starts branching out into the others and pulling others of, of them in. So he's basically been in uh, working with John here. <clears throat> So after this, there was a feast of the Jews, which it doesn't say which feast, but it would be Shavuot, because that comes after Passover. Remember, he was at Passover, and where he taught, ministered to the people and did some miracles and things. It says, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda. We have a church right down the road. This way, that's Bethesda. I always get mixed up between Bethesda and Canaan. Bethesda, having five porches, in these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water, whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatever disease he had. Now this verse, verse four, the reason I got it in black is that was not in the original John's. Uh, chapters in the original book of John. The, the early chapters did not have that in there. And from what Michael said, you can go over to Bethesda, Pool of Bethesda at this point, and every once in a while something will bubble up. I mean, it's, it's a natural thing in there. And so they had come up with this thing that if you jump in the water right after the, the water bubbles or whatever, that you can be healed. But we don't have any documentation or anything that anybody was ever healed other than when Yeshua showed up. But anyway, that was that was what uh, was, but that wasn't originally in in the the first books of John that we have. It says, and a certain man was there which had an infirmity for thirty eight years. When Jesus saw him lie there and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he saith unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? Well, the question I believe was to get him thinking about healing and whatever, because. Of course, he wants to be made whole because where's he at? He's lying by the pool waiting to get in there. So he's, he says, you know, Jesus come walking by and he didn't know who he was. You can tell later on that that he didn't know who, who Jesus was. So he comes walking by and will, will, you, will that be made whole? And he went into nobody to help me. It's, it's like we, there's we always have something to blame or something that way. Well, I can't get in there. I don't have anybody to shove me in there. Uh, anyway, Jesus saith unto him, he went into this long, long prayer, right? <laughs> you know, the, the religious long prayer that we, you know, that we like to do. All he says is, rise, take up thy bed and walk, just like that. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. Have you ever heard when you, if you tell somebody that you believe in healing, it's like, well, why don't you just go to the hospital and heal everybody? Have you ever been told that? I've been told that. It's like, well, you really believe in healing? Why don't you go to the hospital and heal everybody? Well, if God tells me to, I will, I will, go, <laughs> I will go do that. But unless God tells me to, so, so Jesus didn't heal everybody. Look, he walked past how many other people that are lying all around the pool. He healed the one and kept going. He didn't turn around and, and heal everybody. So, so if, if somebody says, well, why don't you just go heal everybody then? Because you believe in healing. It's like, well, Jesus didn't heal everybody at the pool of Bethesda. Doesn't mean that we're not supposed to pray for the sick whenever. It was Jesus healed everybody that came to him. But can you imagine if you were one of those people that were laying there by the pool and you've been waiting for years for the stirring of the water or something? And uh, then Jesus comes by and raises him up and, and walks on by, and you're laying there. You're going, 
Why didn't I yell? Why didn't I scream? Why didn't I, you know, shout out to, you know, Jesus is here and, and do something? But I think they were probably also amazed. They were just, 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 what just happened? I mean, a guy walks by, get up to your bed and walk, the guy jumps up and they both leave. It's like, I, I bet they, they kicked themselves after the fact. Have you ever been to where people have talked to you and said things and this and that, and afterwards you leave and it's like, well, why didn't I say something? Why, you know, if you remember the, the blind man, he was, you know, he, he heard Jesus was coming. He couldn't see him, obviously, but he heard Jesus was coming. He starts yelling out, hey, son of David, come and heal me. Come and heal me. And the people say, just be quiet. Be quiet. You're causing a fuss. You're causing a fuss. And they said the more he did that, the more he, the more he yelled out. And so he yelled out to well, Jesus finally stopped. And he goes, bring that guy over here. You know, what do you want? He said, I want to see. You know, a lot of times we don't have a, a pressing enough thing that we really want that we climb crying out to Jesus for what we what we need. We just kind of go along with kind of hit me last uh, last Wednesday night that it's like we just think things normal. And so we don't think of the healing power of God. You know, it's, it's like, well, we live in this world. We have sickness, diseases and we, and we do have they, they are here. But we also have healing right here in this book. That's for us, for each one of us. And I believe God wants to heal everybody. And uh, I've been going through things, so I've not arrived, but I still believe this book is true. Amen. So regardless of what happens, uh, I believe that healing is for me. And uh, healing was for this man, praise the Lord. So he only healed one. Uh, so what happens? The Jews yelled at the man carrying his bed on the Sabbath. So he picks up his, his mat, and it's not very big. It's said probably the bamboo slats, whatever, where you lay on, and you just roll it up, and, and probably some little, maybe a little bit of padding, and he's carrying it, it, it to the temple going out. It's like, well, the Jews got on his case. It's like, what are you doing carrying a bed? I mean, we, we take a big mattress that we lay on. He wasn't carrying anything like that around. But he, he had this little mat that he rolled up and, and was carrying it through the temple. And it's like, you know, where do you see in the Torah that you're not allowed to do that? They, it's not there, but they had their religious ways of doing things. And so, so they jumped on him about that. And so they asked him, who told you about this? And he said, I don't know. Just a guy came along and told me to get up. And I got up and he told me to carry my bed. And if he can heal me, I can walk to, I can carry my bed and, you know, I'm on the way home or whatever. And so later Jesus came to him and he said in verse 14, afterwards, Jesus finds him in the temple and said unto him, behold, thou art made whole, sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. Now, how many people in all the teachings of healing and, and walking and all this stuff bring this verse in as part of the healing? I mean, it, you don't, you don't, uh, and and he said this, and he said the yeah, he said the he said basically he said this before to other people too. You know, he says your sins are forgiven you. Now, does this mean that wh whoever is sick has sinned? No, doesn't mean that, but it means that it could be have something to do with it. I mean, he says he says uh, thou art made whole, sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. I think that's important. And, and, you know, it's like we hear, you know, that all the curses are for before the, before the crucifixion and, and all the blessings are afterwards. So we only walk in the blessings. We don't walk in any of the curses. But the, but the blessings and the curses the, the, says that if you follow after me, you will walk in the blessing. And if you don't, you walk in the other. And, and Paul even mentions with, you know, he said some of you, and he's talking to the Christians that are taking communion. He says, some of you are sick and some of you have even died because you've taken it unworthily. Now, they were saved people, I believe, that he's talking to. So we need, there is a walk that we walk that, and, and we don't just talk the talk, but we need to walk the walk because you, each one of you, if you profess Jesus as your savior, you are modeling Jesus for the other people that don't know him. And so if we're out there doing everything they're doing and, and they'd say, oh, yeah, all you got to do is accept Jesus and you're fine and do whatever you want. It, it's, it's not what the Bible teaches at all. 
But, I mean, it's the big thing now. It's everything is love and grace. And praise God for love and grace. I mean, I wouldn't be standing here if it wasn't for grace. Uh, but anyway, um, and therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to, sought to slay him because they found him, or he said uh, when Jesus did that, they, they came, the Jews were still there, and, and he told them it was Jesus that healed me. And so what did they do? What any good Christian would do, right? We got to kill him. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine the religious, religious zealot that, that a person heals somebody who has been sick for 38 years and he heals him and he happens to be carrying a bed and they want to come and kill the one who, who released him from that sickness and diseases? Yes. Yes, my denomination says that doesn't work that way, so it doesn't work that way. There are those that speak against people that God uses to heal people. So they kind of kill them with their tongues. And I don't know why I went off on this. Maybe somebody needs to hear this. I don't know. But Matthew 12, 32. Whosoever speaks a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaks against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him. Neither in this world, neither in the world to come. So he said this after they accused him of casting out devils with devil. They're saying that he's casting out devils with the devil. How, how is he really casting out devils? By what? By Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit is revealing these to him. Father's revealing these things to him. So as they come against so what he's saying is you come against what the Holy Ghost is doing. Uh, we need to be careful of how we speak about people. I've heard people, you know, people that are out there that are considered to be in the healing uh, ministry and stuff and just rip them and whatever. And it's like, to me, that's, if that is done by the Holy Spirit, they are coming, coming against the Holy Spirit and doing that because that is how we operate as Christians in the Holy Spirit. You know, when somebody tells you to go pray for somebody to be healed and you go pray for them to be healed, uh, uh, it's led by the Holy Spirit. There are people on the internet that I've seen uh, kind of cruising through there, and their whole ministry is pointing out defects in the other people's ministry. And it's like they have videos and they show things with AI now. We don't know if these are made up or if they're actual real or if it's whatever. Uh, uh, but but we ha we have to be careful, and it's like I wouldn't want to be in that guy's shoes to become the chief judge of all, everything that goes on out there just because it doesn't line up with my denomination, which is one of the reasons I don't like having denominations. If the Holy Spirit tells us to do something, we need to do it, whether or not the denomination says we're to do it or not, right? Because the, the whenever God moves in a new dimension, the ones that were in the move of the dimension before before that move. They're the ones that are most critical of the new move because they have arrived now. We've got this box now that we operate in this box now. So don't operate in this box. Jesus was not operating in the Jewish box. You know, they had it all laid out as to what, how, how it is. You know, you don't, the, the rabbis had come up with, you can't carry anything heavier than a certain amount in, I don't remember what the amount was that they've got. You know what? You know what? The, there's a certain weight that you're not allowed to carry more than of, but that's not in the Torah. That's not. It says that you're supposed to to keep the Sabbath and keep the Sabbath holy. It doesn't say. Uh, it, it says to to abstain from servile work, which, in other words, you're not supposed to go out and do your own job, your own work that you normally do during the week. Is how I look at that, and you're not supposed to do that. But uh, doesn't say you know you can't carry a little mat through the through the temple area or, or whatever after you've been healed you know if you've been healed just leave the leave the mat lay there until come back and get it monday when it's you know more, or sunday when it's more uh, feasible so anyway then another place in mark 9 says and john answered him saying master we saw one casting out devils in thy name and in he followeth us not in other words he's not in our denomination <laughs> 
he followeth us not. And we forbade him because he followeth us not. So they forbid him to cast out devils in Jesus' name because he's not with us. Doesn't that sound like today? He's like, <clears throat> Jesus said, this, this is, I mean, yeah, Jesus said it. I was going to say this is good. Well, if Jesus said, <laughs> if Jesus said it, it's probably good, huh? What do you think? He said, forbid him not, for there is no man who shall do a miracle in my name that can lightly speak evil of me, for he that is not against us is part of us. So we don't know we don't know where these people's hearts are that are out there that are doing things that we don't now there's some things obviously if it's totally against scripture i mean you can see that but but you know just because they're doing something somebody's being slain in the spirit and somebody's going oh that felt good oh that felt good you know somebody's doing things that's not in your denomination and then you come against it that's by the holy spirit so you can be blaspheming the Holy Spirit coming against what? You know, you just need to let it let it be. Each God is going to Yeshua, we'll see later if we get there, we probably will. Uh Yeshua is the judge, the chief judge and bottle washer, if you know what I mean. I mean you do you do it all. I mean, he's the one that's gonna be the judge. It's not up to us to judge, but it says the Bible does say we are to judge among ourselves as to what is right and what is not. But everything is judged through this, not through my what I like and what I don't like. There's things that are in here that I might not like so much, but it's still truth. It's still God's word. It's still the way it is. Well, it depends if the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, it, it, you know, because there's things that need to be straightened out. It's, it's not like this is free for all where everybody does what they feel is right in their own eyes. So it lines up with God, with the word of God. And of course, a lot of people look at a lot of things different in the word of God. But it's better for us just to lay our hands off of it uh, unless it's truly, you know, something that needs to be taken care of. Because, you know, it's like Paul told, said the one church kicked the guy out. You know, don't leave, leave him in the church. So it, there is judgment there, but it should be basically, I believe, in the body that you're that you're attending or you're with. Uh, we're not to go out and judge every Christian out there as to whether they believe cor correctly on every little detail, because you know we're trying. But I'm not going to stand up here and say that we have arrived and know everything that's right. I mean, we're learning. I, I, you know, I've. I feel differently about certain things than I did two years ago because we grow in our spiritual walk. And so we've not arrived and I can stand up here and teach and uh, I don't know everything. Sorry to, sorry to break it down. So Isaac took a deep breath. Like, so, but none of, none of us have it all. You know, we, we sing the song, Jesus have it all, Jesus have it all. Well, you know, we, we say we want all of him. Well, if, he, if I'd have all of him, I wouldn't be here anymore. I'd be like Enoch. He'd take me home, right? But anyway, but it's like how hard-hearted is it? You get so religious and into your what you believe that somebody who heals somebody that was sick for 38 years and you want to turn around and kill this person. And remember what the remember what their main what their main uh, Deuteronomy six four love the Lord your God with all your heart will show and love your neighbor as yourself. If you're doing those things, you would never, especially the love your neighbor as yourself. We I mean we should be glad that the person is healed, even if he was healed by somebody that we don't think is right. It's the spirit that's doing the the work. I think some people are set up to where it's easier for people to release their faith to receive from God. And it doesn't mean that that, that guy is perfect or whatever, but it's just, it's a, it's a release there. Yes, Daniel. The first verse that you read, it was interesting. What I've seen is, um, like, First verse you read, what I seen was 
I'm sure 38 years, if he's been sitting by that fountain, nobody else asked him, hey, you want to get well? And, and number two, what a great, like, with Jesus in us and someone sick, and we go up to him, a stranger, we can say, would you like to be healed? And I'm sure they're going to say yes. And right there's ministry, right? Mm -hmm. Right there's a Jesus opportunity, right? There's a, well, let me tell you about my God who heals. So uh -huh. I thought that was interesting. And then um, just the last thing is um, <clears throat> when, when you're successful because of God, so like Jesus obviously was successful because he was God. And then the, the Jewish leaders was mad at, because they should have been doing that work, right? Uh -huh. So they're not really mad at Jesus. They're projecting onto Jesus themselves and their failures. So that's another thing that I thought was interesting. Yeah. In the political world, we don't know anything about projecting things. Right. Just kidding. Anyway. So they're wanting to kill him because of what he did, because of, because of, uh, but Jesus doesn't back off. I mean, I love that about him. I mean, he, he comes, you know, he just keeps bringing it. And he says, uh, so they're saying he shouldn't be working on the Sabbath, shouldn't be healing, and the man shouldn't be carrying. And, and Jesus just tells him, says, my father worketh hitherto, and so I work. You know, I'm, he works, and I work, and, and I'm going to keep doing the father's will. I'm not going to worry about your uh, little laws and thing. Therefore, the Jews sought the more to kill him. Because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. So now they have a big time problem. <laughs> now they now they got a big time problem because they want to. In other words, if he's equal with God, and if he is equal with God, uh, they're trying to kill God. They don't like they don't like what they what they're what they're doing. Then he went into his teaching mode, and I like this, you know, we went through what he taught uh, the uh, Nicodemus when he came. I mean, he specifically spelled everything out for him, uh, and now he's doing that for these people, too. Uh, he's teaching some deep truths in, in this, uh, where we're coming to. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, verily, verily, when you see the verily, verily, it means that you should really pay attention to what he says. I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he does, these do the Son likewise. For the Father loveth the Son, this is why. I think he loves you too. For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth, and he will show him greater works than these, that ye may marvel. In other words, he's saying, he's going to show me greater things than these. I mean, they're upset with what he just did here. He's, he's, he's going to show me greater things than these yet. I mean, it's almost like poking it a little bit, but he's laying out who he is and wh what he does. Is, is the, if God's doing it, Jesus is doing it. If Jesus is doing it, God is doing it. They're so one because they are one. So, so, I mean, this is the same people. You can't divide them up that way. And he's bringing that out to them. But do you think they're going to listen or, or understand any of it? How many people can really let somebody explain something to them when they're really angry about it? <laughs> you can talk to your blue in the face, and um, it's not going to change their opinion if they're upset. We had a gal walk out of here one time when somebody was teaching. And he said, and she goes, she called me later and she said, she, the Lord showed her. She went home and prayed and the Lord showed her that said Ichabod on our doors, which means that God has departed, I think, or something like that. The glory, the glory has departed. Something like that. But, it, but it's like, and I told Ruth right away, I said, yeah, she's really hearing from God because she's angry. Somebody rubbed her, somebody rubbed her the wrong way. That's that, that, that's what that was a joke. No, no, it's no, like, no. Yeah. I don't think she I don't think she did that. No. But the whole the whole thing was her phone went off during the service and the, the pastor that was here teaching wasn't any from us. He turned that phone off and he said it probably a little stricter than he I think he could have handled it better too, but buddy she jumped up and 
she was out in Ichabod. Anyway, the, I don't know if she thought when she left, the glory departed or what. <laughs> but anyway, God bless her. Uh, but see, he didn't see the father raising everyone at the pool of Bethesda. But he saw the one person there, and he felt drawn to him. The Holy Spirit draws. The Holy Spirit can draw you to somebody to pray for him. That's his job, basically. To not just that, but obviously this whole lot. And the reason he says in verse twenty is the reason he does that is because the Father loves the Son. Now they're both one. And did you know that you really ha you really should love yourself? A lot of the problems we, that we have is we don't love ourselves. Now, I'm not talking about prideful love and all that kind of stuff. But we need to be good about who we are because Jesus made you who you are, Amen. especially if you're born again. Praise the Lord. Because he loves you, he called you, he drew you in. We are now, we are now sons and daughters of Yeshua or of God, but we're not the son. See, they're seeing him as he's pronouncing himself as the son, which means he is one with him. And he's, John, or in John 5, 21, he says, For as the Father raises up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. Uh, the word quickeneth makes alive, born again, how, whatever you want to put in there. It's, it's to make alive, to, to, to bring them about. And so the Father raises up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the Son. So, so if, if they're hearing him through anger and whatever, he's basically telling them that he's God. Well, they, they can't handle that. Uh, but when you brought up, I mean, you cut them some slack here, I guess, because if you're brought up this very strict way of looking at things, and have this, you've got everything in so compartmentalized and you've got all the rabbis that are making all the decisions and stuff like that and telling you what you can do and what you can't do and then have somebody come along like this. You know, we can look at, look at them, but what would you do? You know, we'd, we'd be, because we want to protect what we have. We're doing on YouTube like you just mentioned earlier, right? Yeah. Yes. I think, too, part of the reason they were so angry is because Jesus was calling them out because they weren't following the Torah. They were making up their own laws, and Jesus was following Torah. He was truly following Torah. Yes. They were following they, what? They, were fo they made up their own because I think people don't realize that. They think, oh, all these laws. No, the Jews... The Pharisees and Sadducees had their own set of laws they were doing and adding to the Torah. And they, were, they were adding to, but they, the, right. the, the, fund, the basics was though the, the Torah. What right. they did was they took the Torah and put laws around the Torah, yeah. which built onto it. So, the, so the, you know, the, the keeping the Sabbath holy was Torah, but then they went and just put all the stipulations on it that, that made it right. so heavy that you can't do it. I mean, you're supposed to, when you tie your shoe, you, there's a certain prayer you have to pray when you tie it. Okay, so, uh, don't forget, it's the right one and then the left. Yes, and do the right one first and then the left. First. Yeah. And the shoe. So, so I would hyperventilate too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there's, there's all kinds of things like that. And, and the way you wash your hands, you got, I mean, the Bible doesn't even say that you have to wash your hands before you eat. I mean, they, Jesus gets into that later. So, so it's like when we, when we take something and just, you know, th what they're doing, and that's what Paul, is, I believe, is talking about, is, is you put fences around things in order to keep you there, but then it becomes, then you start going by that instead of by the Spirit of God. And the letter of the law kills. We know that. And, and see, they had the letter of the law. This is what the letter of the law looks like when you just go strictly by the letter of the law without grace and love. Oh, I got, got one amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> uh, so he's telling them by raising up, up the dead, he's telling them that God can raise the dead and he raises the dead. And it's, he's talking about bodily or spiritually, either one. And he says in verse 22, For the Father judges no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son that all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. 
He that honoreth not the Son honoreth not the Father which has sent him. Now, this is pretty much in your face with, against what they are saying. So their heads must have been about to blow up. And this guy is coming, and he's basically speaking as if he's God. Why? Because he is. Because, <laughs> because he is. Rob speaks like Rob. You know. Uh, can we sometimes have a hard time Wednesday nights deciphering his, his sentences and things. I don't know how he makes his phone say those things because mine wants, <laughs> mine, mine wants to make it, make it the words right and it puts words in there that's not even supposed to be there. But we can normally figure them out. What, what you, I think it's, I think it's, 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 yeah, I don't know how scriptural that is either. Uh, so 24 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that hears my word, or my or spirit, spirit, word, right? And believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. So he's talking here about being born again, or born from above. He's saying, if you believe on the Son, you believe on the Father. If you believe on the Father, you believe on the Son. I mean, he, he's given the gospel message in this, you know, he's given them a chance to, to be converted here, basically, and, and given them the facts. <clears throat> and verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming and now is. In other words, the hour it's coming and it is here now. When the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. See, he hadn't raised anybody from the dead yet. Right? I mean, he did in the Old Testament. There was, but Jesus himself at this point, as far as we know, had not raised anyone from the dead. When the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. So I believe he's talking here about the, uh, the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God. How did you get saved? Holy Spirit came and ministered to you. The Holy Spirit drew you. You know, I got saved here in the finish room, which was right here. Just by hearing some people speak, and it's like the love of God just overflowed the thing. And it's like I said, I don't know what they got, but I want that. And I, I was just changed. I didn't even have to walk on the sawdust trail. I mean, it, it just, I, I was so totally changed. It, it was like... I kept hearing the guys speak, and it was like it actually bubbled from my stomach. It, I could feel it bubbling and would come up, and it would go, amen, hallelujah, amen. And I, you know, I was 29 years old, and I didn't want anything to do with Christianity at all. I didn't like Christians. They thought they knew everything. They always wanted to tell me how I'm wrong, how they're right, how Jesus is coming back, and all that stuff. But... Um, Oh, that's when the, the old tent meetings used to have sawdust in, in the middle of the, if it got a little muddy or something, you'd have the sawdust. And you'd, anyway. But that was, a, that was a, the best thing that I ever did, was turn my life over to him. Uh, they shall hear and live, and that's when I became alive. That's when I began to live. When he came and changed me, I was born from above. That's why people, these people aren't born from above, so they're not getting, understanding what he's doing and what he's saying here. That's why the, the Bible says, you know, that the non-believer is not going to understand what you're saying and, and don't believe it. You know, it's like my mom and dad, you know, I said, well, why didn't you tell me it was like this? Because I was walking on cloud nine, man. Uh, I was afraid if I jump, I'd keep going up. I mean, I was just so lightweight and, and whatever. And I said, why didn't you tell me it was like this? And they said, you wouldn't have believed me anyway. And I said, you're right, I wouldn't have. Because my eyes were still blinded at that point. And he says, for as the Father hath life in himself, so has he given to the Son to have life in himself. Self-existent and hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. That kind of brings a whole 
the reason he's got, he can judge the people like he does, and we'll get to that a little bit later on, is because he's also the son of man. He's walked here. He's done what we've, what he, you know, he's, he's been tried and tested, it says, in all things as we were. And so he, he uh, uh, why does he put that? Because he is the son of man when it comes to given authority and to execute judgment. It's because he came as man. But he's still God. He's the fullness of the Godhead bodily. I mean, <clears throat> we know that Jesus raised different ones from the grave, but also that those that are dead, like I was, we come fully alive. Praise the Lord. It's not just talking about the dead. But it says, because he is the Son of Man, he became like us and experienced things we do in Revelation 6 16 through 17 says, and said to this mountain and rocks, fall on us. This is the people that are not saved. Fall on us and hide from us the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. So who's sitting on the throne? Who's the Lamb? Jesus. So it says Jesus is sitting on the Lamb for the great day of his wrath is come. And who shall be able to stand? It's going to be a lot different when, I mean, we have a whole lot of people that are yelling love, and there's love. Praise God for love. The love of God, but there's two dimensions here that he's bringing out. And we don't hear too much about the fire and brimstone anymore. It's like a lot of the old people, have you ever preached on hell? And it's like, yes, I have. I've tried very hard to preach on hell, but somehow I always wind up talking about heaven after. It, it's like you don't want to talk about that because when you think about it, it's horrible. I mean, it's absolutely uh, unfathomable to to put that together because we're so into grace and love and 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 all this that anything you do can be forgiven, which is true. But but you don't have to ask for anything; you just keep walking in it. And it's it, we've gotten a long ways from Torah. We've come a long ways from what God has established as the way that he wants the government to run. Uh, yes, sir. Everything, sorry, I was going to ask you about it. Everything accepts the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit or, or everything? It says, the blasphemy, it, it said that unless you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, right? So everything can be forgiven if you speak against God or Jesus, but not speaking against the Holy Spirit, blaspheming the Holy Spirit. So why is that different to speak against God and the Holy Spirit? God and because I believe that that's the anointing part. It's the power part of God. I got a, I heard this a long time ago. Uh, these three guys were hanging out together and this guy came and, and was, uh, was ministering to them, trying to get them saved. And he's telling them the Holy Spirit will fill you and everything else. And the one of the guys said, you can take your Holy Spirit and go straight to hell. And the others all agreed, yeah. Just take the Holy Spirit to hell. There was three of them, and uh, the one of them was dead the next day of a heart attack. And the same day the other one died, there was another one died, and there was a the third, the last one was a car dealer. And they said he was sitting at his desk, and the person walked in and told him that so and so died, and they said his face just went ashen, and he fell over dead too. It, it's it's like. Now, that's something I heard years and years and years ago, and whether or not that's true, totally true or not, it came from a pastor. Uh, that doesn't mean it's true, but, <laughs> but it, it should add validity to it. But then, uh, but it's like we just have to be to be careful, I believe, as to how we I mean, that's pretty drastic when you say you can take your Holy Spirit and go to hell. I mean, that's blaspheming the spirit. But what I, my point was when, when things are operating and we believe it's the Holy Spirit is moving to not come against that and, and, and say that's of the devil when you, we don't, you know. And, and I've been to a lot of places. I've, I've seen a lot of movement of God, what the Holy Spirit's done. And I've been to places where I don't think that necessarily everything was Holy Spirit. But the devil tries to come in and mess up what, when God is moving in the in, in Holy Spirit. And, uh, well, I mean, they, you know, when you get two, three, 
you know, when you get two, three guys together like that, and one guy says something like that, and, and, and oh yeah, it's true, take it. But he had heard about the other, other guy, and he was already afraid because he knew what had happened. I mean, he's... Uh, and then <clears throat> talking about people that come alive, uh, being born again and everything. And then in John 28, it says, Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice and shall come forth. It says all that are in the grave. Now, we're taught that there's two different, two different raisings, and I believe that's probably true, that the saints were going to be raised first, and then the, the, the others will be raised that are not saved at the end of the thousand-year tribulation. Uh, but anyway, I don't, that's kind of how I understand it at this point. <clears throat> All are that hear the grave shall hear his voice and shall come forth, they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. So he's basically giving them the whole gospel. He's telling them basically, if you believe in me, uh, you're going to be raised from the dead and you're going to live with him forever. Resurrection of life. Amen. I mean, we we kind of have a deposit of that when we're born again. When we're born from above, we receive the seal of the Holy Spirit, and so we're kind of born that way. But but we will be uh, then when we pass away, we will be in heaven with Him. Hallelujah. Um, and he's basically quoting quoting Daniel twelve two. Uh, it says, and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. This is something that's been from the beginning, basically, right? So you will receive one or the other. You will receive resurrection of life or resurrection of damnation, and it's up to us. He, he you know, Jesus decides that you're going to be in heaven with him. The devil decides that you're going to be in hell with him. Who has the, who has the decision? Where you're going to wind up at? We each have a decision to make. We decide, are we going to rise up in the resurrection of life, or are we going to be resurrected into damnation? It's not something we like to hear about, not something I really like to teach about, but I think we probably need to hear a lot more of it than what we do today. It's a resurrection's a good word if you get resurrected into the right place. To damnation? Well, we are eternal beings. Either way we go. Yeah. We live forever. Which is inner, which I always, when I, John 3 16, I always wonder what it means by perish. But he shall not perish, but have eternal life. So I hope God's got some good things at the end for. I don't think, I don't think the people that are, are not saved are ever going to be saved if they die that way. But not so sure about that forever part. I'm, probably totally wrong because there's there's scriptures the other way and then there's scriptures the other way i've been taught both both ways and uh, i'm hoping for one for their sake and but i'm kind of believing that it's a forever but to to con to comprehend being in hell having flames around you at all i mean you, you know if you burn yourself how much does that hurt i mean it hurts to contemplate that is is just unfathomable basically to 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 believe that or not to believe it because he says it but because jesus talks more about hell than anybody else does so yeah well people really have to be a fool not to if that was the case but i i don't know if that's true necessarily so, and it says in, thir in verse 30, I can of mine own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. Again, the two are in agreement, because they are one. Right? 
that the Father is, is, is the Father, and Jesus is the Son. And uh, so it's hard for us to understand how the three can be one, but the Bible says that the three are one. And, you know, whether you call it Trinity or whatever you call it, the Trinity makes it sound more like there's three individual um, people, but I don't believe there's three individual people. I believe there's the Father is a spirit, and Yeshua is uh, is the I don't want to say a hologram, but that's kind of what a, he's the projection of, of who Yeshua is. So whatever Yeshua is, God is, and what God is, Yeshua is, because they are, are one. And then Holy Spirit is the anointing the power that operates in that. And uh, actually, the word Christ is basically means anointing, anointed. Uh, so when we say the Lord Jesus Christ is the Father and the Son and the anointing, which is the Holy Spirit, the power. Yes, sir. That's true that when God says in the beginning, when He's talking about making man, He says He's talking He's like He's talking, he's talking to Himself. He says, "We." Mm -hmm. if, if it's true that it's one being, is He talking to Himself, or is there actually three conversing? That's a good question. Yes. Let us. He, he says, "Let us." He, yes. He, yeah, yes. He said, "Let us." He, he said, "Let us make. Let us make man in our own image." Is is what He says there, and so, yes. <laughs> they speak you know and, and you know the other thing is you know we can go around and around on this whole thing it's like jesus is down here and he gets baptized and then uh there's a voice from heaven going uh this is my son in whom i am well pleased well is jesus throwing his voice up there no right right yeah because he's in us, how can Jesus be living in me? So he needed that because I need to go to the desert. Yeah. The challenge comes with three-dimensional beings yeah. Yeah. trying to understand a, a being that's more than three dimensions. And so think of it like if I drew a piece of paper, drew a, a man on a piece of paper that's two dimensions, right? but yet I'm interacting in three dimensions with that two dimension piece of paper. He would see me in two dimensions, but yet I'm outside of it in three dimensions. Okay, and so the, the point being is we're trying to wrap our minds around something that is outside of the three dimensional world we're living in. And we're seeing portions and pieces of him. But that word, so when we see the, the Lord our God is one, that word is ekad, okay? That's a compound unity, union. Yakid is the Hebrew word for a singular unity. So there is a compound unity there, ekad, with God, that's very difficult for us to understand because we're in a three-dimensional world and he's multi more than three dimensions. Yeah. And he's entering, so we're seeing bits and pieces of him and interacting with him and we see it only from our perspective that we can understand. Mm -hmm. And he's seeing it from his perspective that he's all around us and within us and outside of us all at the same time. And this is why there's a place where Jesus said, the son of man who is here and also in heaven. How is that? We don't, we can't understand that. Nevertheless, it's true. Does that help? Yeah. Uh, Eric, don't you think too that, uh, where he says, I am the son of God, and you the son of God, son of God, son of God. Don't you think that's just so our brains or their brains at the time could comprehend something? Because yes and no. The not, he wasn't born of God. He is, right? He, yes and no. So the term son is a, it's, it's a cultural understanding that they knew that the purpose of a son was to carry on the father's business. Mm -hmm. And so it connects him to the father. But the son of man is a specific title related to Daniel that he had talked about of the one sitting upon the throne. And so when he said, I'm the son of man, he's saying, he's telling them exactly, they knew exactly who he was saying he was. So yeah, that's why I say he doesn't back off. Yeah. But I like, I like the, uh, the egg thing. You, may, you have an egg and you have the yolk and you know, I mean, there's three parts of the egg, but it's still the egg. And like you and I are talking right now, you, you are talking to a husband, you're talking to a father, you're talking to a son, I was a son, 
and I'm, I'm also a grandpa, so how can I be all four of those things? But I mean, I, I, I am in all of those things. That's a, more of a simplistic trying to get my brain wrapped around it than, than the other, because like he said, we don't, you know, it's like, how was, how was uh, Christ slain before the foundation of the world? You know, I mean, that's beyond our, you know, whatever. I believe what he means that they had already decided that and whatever, but still to say that he was slain before the foundation of the world. Uh, well, there's, there's, of time, so. Yeah, he's outside of time. He's already been here where we're at, and he'll, he's in our tomorrow already. Yeah. Can I say one more thing for what, what he's doing here? I think, and that we should all appreciate this because we're so religious as people that when somebody asks us a question, especially in a situation, I've been in your situation before, and the first thing that happens is my flesh wants to rise up and, and give you an explanation that maybe I don't fully understand, but it, it makes you think that I understand it. And, <laughs> and what he's doing here is honest. And, and the reality is when you see people who say they can understand the triune God, all right, if I can fully understand something and explain it, that puts me on an equal level with it, okay? And, and the reality is there's nobody on this earth that fully understands the triune God. And anybody who says that and tries to position themselves that they can do that is, is positioning themselves from, from a place that's not true. They're giving, a, they're giving you a vain religious show to make you impressed with them and not with God. Okay, so I appreciate what you're doing here. I wanted to say One thing that's helped, helped me understand, and I don't understand the trend, not, you know, whatever, but uh, Sister Gwen Shaw, a lot of you know who she used to be, uh, but she got a card in the mail from somebody who was, she lives in Arkansas, and she got a card from Indiana or wherever it was, and thanking her to come into her room and praying for her and healing her. And uh, so she, she sent her a card, and she looks at it, Sister Gwen looks at it, and she goes, I wasn't in Indiana during that time. Well, now that's kind of outside of my realm <laughs> of believing. You know, it's like, can you really think that God can take Elijah and take him and put him in a hotel, in a hospital room and pray for somebody? And that person is healed and bring him back and put him back into his body. Do you think God can do that? Well, that's what he did with this because she was never there. But she says, I saw you, and she talked to her, and she said, I saw you, you came, walked into, I know you did, you walked into my room, you prayed for me, and then you left, and I was healed. Now, if he can do that to a person, he can do that with himself. He's got things coming out from him all the time. How, how can he speak to Daniel over here and speak to me at the same time? Wi-Fi. He's got a special, he's got a special kind. He's got a special, it's called Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit Wi-Fi. See now, in our denomination, are we gonna are we gonna allow are we gonna allow that kind of thing? Oh, oh, this can't be God. And you don't, and you really don't see that in the scripture necessarily of that happening. <laughs> but God is we we try to put God in the box and operate in the way we think. When he can think of a way, now he's not going to operate outside of this and come against anything here, which Jesus didn't either, even though they accused him of. But he's never going to, but, but we got to allow him, and we got to expect it. We serve a supernatural God that we see all through the scriptures is a miracle. When God shows up, what happens? Miracle. Stuff stuff that you don't expect can happen, happens. Yeah. And so that's, what we, that's how we have to live our lives in expecting God to show up instead of doing an Eeyore complex. Woe is me. Nothing good is going to happen to me today. 
you know, and then the piano falls on top of it, you know, or whatever. And we were sharing that people sharing stories, and um, so I, I too watch YouTube. I don't know, I was watching um, Sid Roth, it's supernatural, and so they had this. This is not my story, I'm just relaying, but it, it, it made me start thinking, like, wow, you know, so there, there's, and so lengthy, do I, I got permission to kind of go into it? Yeah, I got the mic, I guess. Okay, so. so I, got, I got my bouncer over here, yeah, if you say the wrong thing. Yeah. <laughs> so um, um, uh, there was this, this preacher, but he, I guess he also, like, back in the 30s, this woman was probably in her 60s telling the story and she was a little girl when the big tent revivals and things were going around. And, and uh, there's this preacher, but he was like part-time preacher, part-time meat cutter. And he- <laughs> Kind of the same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he, uh, he cut his index finger off like at the tip. And back then they didn't have like, oh, you know, so, sewed so it on, back on. So they sewed it on good enough and, and he got the bleeding to stop and everything. Well, he preached like, I don't know, a couple of days later at this big tent revival. And so, you know, everybody's there with their walkers, wheelchairs, whatever. So he gets up to the pulpit and he's, and so this is her story, but this is a, a supernatural thing. Like made me really think about like, wow, really? So he gets up to preach, he makes a point and he hits his hand on the pulpit and his finger flies off. But God grew a brand new finger on his finger. Well, the stub like flew off and hit a paraplegic in the front row. They got up and started walking, got <laughs> rid of the, I'm just like, what? And so, so the joke, and then like, it, it, and something else happened, it rolled down and hit another kid in the foot and then his leg healed. And I'm just like, what in the world? So now they say that, you know, at, at, at that time in the fifties, they said like, um, that was the finger of God touching everybody, you know, it was kind of a joke, but I just looked at it and like, Wow, so I told my buddy like at work, it's like, dude, you should have seen what I seen on YouTube. And I told him he's just sitting there like this. Like he didn't know if I was like great because I think he's like, he's not real religious in quotation marks, but I think he's like, you know, Catholic background. And I mean, he looked at me like he was, gonna, I didn't know if he was going to run out of there or, but I, I used it as a, um, a ministry opportunity, but you know, that's you know, awesome. I just, stuff like that is amazing. You know, they say Catholics, uh, actually understand and, and believe in miracles more so than others because they have that in built into their having miracles things i think i lost control <laughs> now she's going to straighten me out yeah. no i heard this this prophecy years ago okay sorry about that so this prophecy years ago and i'm still standing and believing but this prophecy was that when abortion is stopped in America, that people are going to be healed. Mm -hmm. so I'm waiting for that. Well, then we need to stop it quickly. Yeah. So verse 30, did I do this? I judge my judgment is just because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. And that, that's how we are to operate also. We are to operate in the, what we are not here just to do our own thing. We are here after we sign on into the army of God to do the will of God, to do what he asks us to do. Uh, and he says, if I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. So in the Torah, you can't, you can't be convicted with just one witness. There has to be at least two. And so he's, he's saying, if I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true, because in the Torah, it's not necessarily true. I can come and, and blame Janine or, or accuse her of something, but somebody has to come along and, and collaborate what I say. And that is so that one person can't just knock another person down or whatever. There has to be at least two, two uh, convictions. So, um, so they're trying him for a crime here, basically. Is that there is another that bears witness of me, and I know that the witness which he's witnessed of me is true, which God, I, I believe, spoke at his mikvah when he spoke over him. I need to get this wrapped up. <clears throat> I'm always reminded of my brother-in-law who said that a good message is one that has a good start and a good ending and not much in between. Uh, <laughs> but, but ye send unto John, and he bear witness unto the truth. But I receive not testimony from man, but these things I say, that ye might be saved. He was a burning and a shining light, and ye are willing for a season to rejoice in his light. So John proclaimed him as, a, as the Lamb of God. Remember when he came, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God takes away the sins of the world. And we know what 
Everybody knew what the lamb was because there was always a lamb sacrificed in the morning and a lamb sacrificed in the evening. So it's like this is the lamb of God that's going to take away the sins of the whole world. Praise God. Ye send unto John, and he bear witness unto the truth, which the truth is the word, and he is the word. But I receive not testimony from man, but these things I say, that ye might be saved. He was a burning and a shining light, and ye were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. So, in 36, But I have greater witness than that of John, for the works which the Father hath given me to finish, the same works that I do bear witness of me that the Father has sent me. So the works that he's doing, the miracles that he's doing, and all this points to him that points to everyone that he is of the Father. And I believe when we do miracles, when we do things to pray for people and things like that, uh, things happen, uh, we're proclaiming the Father, we're projecting him. Uh, then he says, but I have a greater witness than that of John. I just read that. Because yeah. he's the one, he's the one, because uh, of the works that he's doing. And I believe we do the same thing. Then in the rest of the chapter, he pretty much uh, lets them have it again. But he's, he's speaking to them. I mean, Jesus is, is revealing himself, who he is to these people, but they, don't, won't, they won't hear it. They, they won't listen. So what does the Bible say about them that they're ever hearing and never perceiving or they've never come to the knowledge of Christ because they've got their own. It, it, it doesn't line up with what they were taught in their schools, and so they can't receive him. It says, Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice and shall come forth, they that have done good and the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. He gives it to him again. Gave him the whole, I already did this. I must have missed a, uh, missed a page here. I think I've got two pages that are the same. Ye search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they that are which, they which testify of me, and ye will not come to me, that ye might have life. I'm telling you all this stuff, but you're not coming, you're not, you're not hearing what I'm saying, you're not yielding to what I'm saying and believing that what I'm saying is true. You will not come to me that you might have life. I receive not honor. Then like what I said before is it's their choice as to whether they receive it or not. There are some that did receive, but he's talking to these uh, people that are trying to kill him. I receive not honor from men, but I know you that you have not the love of God in you. So how can he say that? He healed someone sick for 38 years. He's sealing the sick and he's doing miracles. The only rules he is breaking are man-made traditions. He's not breaking any of God's rule. Uh, would someone who loves God, loves his fellow man, be happy when someone else is healed or not? That's how he can say that they don't have the love of God in them. If they have the love of God in them, that they would be happy for that person. I am come in my Father's name and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. How can ye believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God? Uh, do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuses you, even Moses, to whom ye trust. For had ye believed Moses, this is interesting, for had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe in my word? Now that one really had to get them because they really believed they were in Moses. They really believed what Moses said was true. In fact, they come up with all these, the rabbis came up with all these laws in order to protect the Torah. But actually what they did was they brought people further away from the Torah in what they did. Because one of the laws in the Torah is do not add to it. Yeah. Sorry, I don't know why. Yeah, so... Yeah in the process of protecting the Torah, they were breaking it. Yeah. Right, because it says not to add. Uh, so, and wrapping it up, Mark seven thirteen, he says, making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered, and many such things like this do you. Uh, I wonder what he would say to us today. Isn't that interesting? 
What would he say to us today? What are we doing today that is just more tradition and it kind of nullifies the Word of God? So these men were not born or born again, not from above. They were following the letter of the law, which kills the spirit. In, their, in that there is no grace. In the law, if you're strict law, if you do X, then Z happens. Right? There is no grace. There's no this. this. But basically, the scriptures is like the Constitution. And so what we're supposed to do is operate within the Constitution. And, and I believe Torah is the Constitution. Just like in, the, in America, we have a constitution, which a lot of people don't like now because it's, we're tied to that. They can't, you know, like they want to take our guns away, but the constitution says they're not allowed to. So they're trying to, trying to get around that uh, to do that. But it's like, uh, and so now we have judges that are making rules and laws, which is what the rabbis did. They made rules and laws, but they, they went outside of where they had jurisdiction to actually. Amen? So, Lord heal Daniel. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. So, did we get anything out of this? He's really revealing himself who he is. That's what he's trying to show them, but they refuse to hear. What is he trying to show you that you don't want to hear? Do you push stuff aside because you think, well, that doesn't fit in what I believe? Or what we need to do is, you know, and I'm, I'm not saying that we do because there's, there's people that say, Holy uh, God told me this or the Holy Spirit told me this, and then it doesn't work. I've had that happen one time. The guy said, well, Spirit said we're supposed to do this. So we did it and it didn't work. Well, let's do this. And I said, uh, what happened? It, it must not have been God because God wouldn't have told us to do that if it didn't work. So it's like some people think every thought they have come into their head is God. Well, the enemy tries to plant things in there too. So that's where our discernment comes in. That's why we need discernment, discerning what is of God and what is not of God. Amen. And the way you discern that is by reading the scriptures. That's why it's important to read the Bible because that's your constitution. That, that builds inside of you and builds a foundation inside of you that then when you come off that foundation, it's like, oh, something's wrong here. This doesn't line up. And then you pull yourself back to that. That's why we need to read the word. Even if we don't understand every little jot and tittle or how the three are one, <laughs> but, but we keep reading and and nobody understands, like Eric said, nobody understands everything. And that's why I like the dialogue, different people speaking, speaking up uh, to where it brings other thoughts and views into, into it. And then I get to shoot it down. <laughs> <clears throat> praise the Lord. Yes, praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's all stand. Thank you, Father. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Jehovah shall bless thee and shall keep thee. Jehovah shall make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. Jehovah shall lift up his countenance upon you and he will give you shalom. Go in shalom. His, his peace. Thank you, Father.